since you joined Native Forward, it seems like you've had a tremendous impact on the organization itself and have taken it to a new level of effectiveness and scale. Can you talk about that process from yes. joining the organization in one place and bringing it to a completely different one? I'm, there's a lot of challenges I know that go along with that, but I'm curious about your journey there. I feel actually very proud about this because when I came in, the thing I did was just learn. I learned mm. from everyone who was there, the experts who were on the ground. And what I learned in my first year there is that my predecessors built a fabulous program around scholarships and support systems for students. And so when it came to what I could contribute, I came in with my MBA and saying, okay, what do we have? We have this phenomenal product and or service, right? We have this phenomenal thing. And it was very clear to see it was missing marketing. It was missing fundraising. It was already fabulous. It just needed a little light shown in that direction and a lot more money put into to marketing and then maybe some infrastructure around fundraising. And again, that comes with sharing your stories. So I think that's what I've done is came in and definitely took my education and my business degree and implemented the marketing strategy. And, and also I'm very strong in strategic planning. So creating a plan and executing is, I'm a little nerdy, like, you know. <laughs> it's good though. It's important. Don't tell anyone. But I, I do. I love creating strategy, but I think the key is getting everybody on board and executing it. But we had the first strategic plan. We had a four-year strategic plan and we're able to implement that fully in four years. And then with the infusion of some funding that we received, we were able to procure the just top of the line strategy work. And, uh, and my little strategy looked like the toddler strategy compared to our current one. And so I think that it's a combination of taking that education and looking at it from a business aspect, and then taking that funding to be able to really execute to the next level and having people believe in, in, in the, our leadership and what we needed to do. So I think it was a combination. I think no one does it alone. It, it really yeah. is a team who's doing the work and has always done the work. And it's just shining a light on it and pulling in partners and people who believe in it. And it's, I think that's the key. You know, the people that start an amazing program are not necessarily the same people that can run an effective organization at scale. It's a, just a different mindset in many cases, different skill set. A lot of the things you were talking about our investments in infrastructure and, and overhead, which is still, unfortunately, and we're working to change this, kind of a dirty word in the nonprofit sector. Can you talk about your approach to making those investments and what that conversation was like internally at the organization, as well as with potential funders? Yeah. Well, we are looking at when we did our strategy work and we really analyzed, where are we? I think that data is important. And when you look at where are we and you're looking at overhead and indirect, I don't think those are bad words. I think that what a lot of nonprofits are doing is they have such a low overhead that they're not able to execute well. And that is one of the conversations we had internally. And what was happening is that we were burning out staff and that's mm. definitely not what we want to do. We want to make sure that we have happily, fairly compensated employees who are doing one job, not three. So I think that's a part of a healthy corporate environment. Why is that not a healthy part of a nonprofit environment? So I think that it is important when working with investors that they feel that they're able to have enough transparency to vet you, to say, what are you really doing? And to have those open dialogue to say, here's where we are, here are our shortcomings, and to just be able to clearly outline those in your analysis of the organization. So I think it's having those open conversations and getting champions, but also you have to be able to show that the work is actually being done and effective. But for us internally, it's really looking at those shortcomings. And I think that the exciting thing is that every time we do this, we refine it. So my mm -hmm. first 
strategy was exactly what you're talking about. It was infrastructure type things. And now we're in a growth phase, right? So we are scaling. And I'm excited because when you look at the number, we only fund 18% of the scholars who apply. That number is moving, but that shows such a high need, such a high need. And so we just needed to be able to scale what we were doing to be able to serve those other students and that we're starting to see movement in that now. So I'm excited to see our numbers from this year and next year, because I feel like we're definitely moving the needle and scaling up. But you're right. The first few years were really was really focused on building that infrastructure and putting those additional staff members in place. And now we're scaling up. So this was a big year for us. We've received so many awards and it feels yeah. good to have the accolades, but more importantly, it feels good to uh, have people know who we are and want to jump in and support us and, and they see the value in it as we do, because it's really about that impact and, and what we do. So the awareness is phenomenal, right? It's very humbling to see how much awareness we've had this year, but at the end of the day, it feels even better to have people join you on the journey and believe in you and truly see the impact. Two questions stemming from what you you just said. First of all, as you've invested in growth and marketing and fundraising, what has that increased revenue, increased capacity translated to in terms of increased impact? And, and second, with the increased awareness, what has that meant to the organization, you know, even beyond just the dollar amounts? and advocacy and volunteering in general support? Oh, I would say dollar-wise, when you look at that, you're looking at the Native Forward being able to quadruple revenue. And then when you're looking at net assets, our net assets went from, oh gosh, about $4 million to $40 million. You're looking at 10 times when you're looking at dollar amounts. And I think that's great for business people to think of. But I think when you're talking about impact, you're talking about numbers. You're talking about the numbers of lives that you've changed. And we've seen such a big infusion in industries that where we didn't usually have funding. So I know I've talked a lot about the STEM funding that we receive, and that's important. But also we have seen a big increase in the language funding in the land conservation funding. And um, I think that's important. Uh, I would love to see more funding in the arts. I think that's something that mm. is underfunded still in this country. But we, we have seen an increased funding in some of those areas. But also we've been able to, I think we talked about this earlier, it just comes down to the number of lives that we can impact. And going from... I guess when I started, I think we had scholarships that were $500 and $2,500. And now we're able to increase that to up to $30,000 per scholar. And then the other thing I'll say is that we had funding for undergraduate, graduate, and professional degrees when I started. And now we have funding for certifications. We have mid-year funding and we have funding for tests. We have funding for to take your CPA. And we survey our students every year and say, what do you need? Mm -hmm. And they come back with, okay, this is really what I need. So we've tried to fill those gaps. Oh, and then the other stuff is postdoc. You could get funded for your PhD, but when you're finalizing your dissertation, there's no funding around for that. So now we have funding in areas that we've never had before and funding throughout the year instead of just once a year, because sometimes life happens and, and students ha have a different starting point, or if they drop out and need to start midterm, or maybe they miss the scholarship application date. And so now we have a second cycle. So the impact is very significant for us, the direct impact to scholars, because the funding that we have received, we have invested it and we take a percentage of that and we just give it directly out into the scholarship dollars in the way that is most needed for them. But then also, to your point, we've been able to scale up in staff to be able to perform the duties that they need to for us to scale in that regard. I imagine you've been able to make some key hires as well with that that you wouldn't have been able to afford otherwise. Yes, we have a whole development team now. And before it was me and one other staff. 